Everyone knows that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link, but what a lot of riders don't know is how chain wear affects other components in a bike's drivetrain. That's why monitoring your chain for wear and replacing it regularly is the best way to keep the rest of your mountain bike drivetrain parts going strong for as long as possible. A lot of people refer to chain wear as chain stretch, and although that's not a completely accurate description of what's going on, it is a useful way to think about it. What's actually going on inside the chain as it wears is that the rollers and pins wear down over time due to friction between the two components. This wear happens faster if you ride in muddy or sandy conditions, and faster still if you don't keep your drivetrain clean and properly lubricated. And e-bike riders should really keep an eye on chain wear, because these bikes put very high loads on chains that wear them out faster than when the same chains are used on fully human-powered bikes. Eventually, all that wear results in a chain that doesn't mesh up properly with the teeth of the chainring, cassette, and derailleur pulleys. So what ends up happening is those parts eventually get worn to match. That's what causes the valleys between the teeth to turn from a roughly symmetrical tulip shape to an asymmetrical shape that resembles the void between two waves breaking on the beach. This makes the teeth look like a shark's dorsal fin. This new chain of tooth geometry makes the chain stick to the chain ring teeth when it should be rolling smoothly off the underside of the ring. It also makes shifting sluggish and rough. Generally speaking, the chain is the fastest wearing component in a drivetrain, so it has to be replaced frequently in order to preserve the other components. The only way to accurately measure a chain's wear is with a chain wear checker. There are lots of them out there, and they all have their advantages and disadvantages, but my favorite is the Park CC2 for all 10, 11, and 12-speed mountain chains. It's really easy to use and read. Just follow the replacement guidelines on the tool, and you're golden. My only word of warning is that once you get past about 0.9, you're probably too late, and a new chain may not even work with your older worn drivetrain components. So if you're in this boat and you're not sure if a new chain will work or not, be sure to save the old one, because you may need to put it back on. Your local bike shop can help you make that determination if you're not sure. They can also get you any replacement master links or pins that you may need to reinstall the old chain. For viewers out there that want to dive deeper into the drivetrain wear rabbit hole, here's where that part of the video starts. Wear on a drivetrain generally happens to the fastest moving parts and or the ones under the highest load. Although derailleur pulleys are by far the softest part of the system and turn faster than everything else, they're on the untensioned bottom side of the drivetrain, so they tend to last a really long time. But on the high tension side of things, you have a battle between the chainring teeth, cassette teeth, and chain to see which part is the hardest, and that will vary greatly based on what materials, including their heat treatment processes and surface treatments, each of these parts have. High-end chainrings from SRAM, RaceBase, and E13 are all made from aluminum, which is soft, and it can wear quickly in muddy conditions. It's why SRAM switched from their X-Sync tooth design to the newer X-Sync 2 shape. X-Sync 2 is made to prevent chains from dropping off the ring, even when the ring is highly worn. In addition to offering better performance over the life of the ring, X-Sync 2 was a necessary development because SRAM's XX1 Eagle chains have a hard chrome plating that's so tough, it tends to wear out rings and cassettes faster than chains with softer surface treatments. I should note here that X01 chains have hard chrome parts too, but on fewer of the chain's small parts. That super tough hard chrome is one of the reasons why XX1 cassettes have fancy colors. The colored surface treatment is extra hard and extends the lifespan of those parts. For that reason, I generally recommend SRAM GX chains for all riders, regardless of the level of their SRAM drivetrain. It ensures that the chain is going to wear the fastest and preserve the rest of those components. Given their cost, finding out your X01 or XX1 Eagle cassette is worn out is a real bummer if you're short on cash. In case you're wondering about quality differences between chain price points, all SRAM chains are made in the same factory in Coimbra, Portugal, and they all meet the same quality standards. So what you're actually paying for with the higher price chains are tougher materials, better surface treatments. The same advice generally applies to Shimano 12-speed drivetrains. XTR and XT chains also have a chrome treatment that will wear cassettes faster than an SLX chain. 
So for an optimal miles to dollars ratio, a Shimano SLX chain is really a great way to go. Providing, of course, that you stay on top of replacing it before it gets too worn. When it comes to chain ring wear with Shimano, the rings all use steel teeth, except for XTR, which gets aluminum. So unless you have an XTR crank set, chain ring wear will be of little concern for you. Thanks for watching and remember to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified when that next episode of Ask a Mechanic is ready for your viewing pleasure.